Good morning. The friends and families of Holy Trinity Catholic Parish, thank you for joining us today for the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. The Holy Sacrifice of the Mass can be viewed via live stream on the parish's Facebook page and heard each Sunday on KVFD 1400 at 8.30 a.m. Welcome to this celebration of the Mass of the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The opening song will be number 836, Gather Us In, number 836. Please rise. Good morning. To this, we gather together as a community of faith to once again give uh, praise and glory to God with gladness and joy. And so let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, we once again remind ourselves and of our sinfulness, and as we do so, we recognize that we are always in need of God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all of the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you.
Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that, made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all, that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your majesty over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebu rebuke temerity. But Though you are master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good grounds for hope that when you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. A, letter from, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings and with 
and the one who searches hearts, who knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat, and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slave said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time I will say to the harvesters, First, collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then, dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, he who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, the good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are the angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, 
so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. Kindly sit. My dear brothers and dear sisters, before I begin, I want to tell you that I come from a place called Goa, a state, the state called Goa in India, and my parish is the village of Benauli, and my church is also Holy Trinity Church. So there is a special connection to me. To, for me to be with you today in a church that is dedicated to the Holy Trinity. This last two Sundays, we are listening about sowing. Last Sunday's gospel was about the seed, good seed that is sown, but some falls among on the pathway, some falls among the thorns, others on the rocks. And a few fall in good soil and produce fruit. To remember today's gospel and the message, we keep two words in our minds. Seed and weed. Many of us are working on our lawns these days. And so we plant seed so that the lawn becomes better wherever there is no lawn. But also we are looking out for weeds. And if you don't pluck out those weeds in time, they grow and spoil the lawn. That's a similar story that Jesus is telling us today. Good seed has been sown. But then there is also weeds that are growing and who put them there? And the story of Jesus says the evil one put them there. So God sows good seed. But the evil one comes and sows bad seed. Should the bad seed be removed or should the weeds be removed? Well, we ask this question often. A parishioner came up to me one day and said, Father, why does God not punish the bad people? Especially those who, do, who make wars. This happened soon after the Ukraine war began. And she was from Ukraine. And many of her own home people were being distressed because of the war. And she was asking, why does God not punish those who are bad, those who are evil? Maybe these thoughts went through your minds too. And Jesus answers that question today. So it's in the plan of God not to, not to act quickly. The book of wisdom tells us God is mighty. But his might is seen when he governs in leniency. He's lenient to us, not quick to punish. And he's forgiving. So he's waiting for an opportunity that we will repent or we will change from our evil ways. And not only that, God makes of himself an example to all those who are good and just. That they should be merciful, they should be kind to those who are not just, for those who are evil. And so in our world, the good and not so good live together. And the not so good have an opportunity to change their lives by looking at those who are good. So each one of us makes ourselves an example for those. If you see somebody who is doing something wrong, Make of yourself a good example for them 
that they could also understand and change so there are two more parables in the gospel today the first the second one is speaking about a mustard seed when planted in the ground it is a small seed but it grows to be a big bush and the birds of the air can take shelter in its branches the third parable is about a little yeast that is used in flour and that little yeast makes the whole flour to rise now these two parables are the parables of the kingdom of god jesus says the kingdom of god begins like that like a small seed but then grows into a big tree and so from the time of jesus from the time of the apostles who are a small nucleus the kingdom of god has now spread all over the world i come from a distant country 8000 miles away from india and you and i share the same faith now the parable of the mustard seed and the parable of the yeast also tell us that in our lives good and evil begins in a small way and grows so the more we allow good things to grow in us we grow in goodness but like the weeds wrong things too start in a small way and grows and grows into big sinful habits so there is this english saying which goes watch your thoughts they become your words watch your words they become your actions watch your actions they become habits watch your habits they become your character if we look back into our lives the many things that we do not want to do which have become habits with us they began in a small way once twice three times and without we stopping we kept doing them again and again and now they have become habits we can't get over and so the way forward is to change one thing that we don't like about ourselves or others tell us that is not right about us start by doing it once differently if i lose my temper and get very very abusive the next time i'm feeling angry watch what i say control myself that i don't abuse when i'm angry and the second time it happens do the same the third time it becomes easier the fourth time even more easier and before you know you will have learned to control your temper and we you won't use words that are not helpful when you are angry I am a member of a society called the Society of the Missionaries of St Francis Xavier and like the parable which speaks of the mustard seed a small seed the kingdom of god is yet to be planted in the world in india a country of 1.4 billion people christianity is only 3% 97% of the country do not know Christ and our mission or our aim is to proclaim Jesus Christ to those who have not heard of him and to those who have become indifferent to him and so we work in the remote parts of india mainly among non christian people and like jesus engaged the people of his time in their situation in their environment jesus went and met the fisherman he went to the market place and met the people we engage people in their ways of life and so we have schools for the less fortunate children we have homes for these children who have disturbed families either they are often or abused or their parents have left them we have training schools for the youth that they can be trained and find gainful employment and we have to train catechists to go out to these more hostile areas in india where a priest is not allowed to go it is the catechists who go and teach the faith first 
and the priest goes many many months later or years later to baptize the people we have to train seminarians who will become priests and future missionaries i went through my seminary training without paying for my education it was paid for by by benefactors or benevolent people like you and so in my 27 years as a priest in india i have worked in many of these remote places and let me tell you many of a lot of our mission work has benefited from the generous donations of the church of of america and let me tell you how it works One dollar American dollar multiplies eighty times in India, and so if you go to have a breakfast and spend fifteen dollars on a breakfast here in America, fifteen dollars can bring a breakfast for fifteen children with two eggs, a cereal, a cup of milk. and a fruit because it goes a long way because it multiplies 80 times in india and so whatever help you give will be a big help to the mission work that our society is doing in india i thank you all for listening to me and i pray for god's blessings on you know that god keeps his promises your generosity Jesus will pay you back a hundred times that is his promise thank you very much let us together profess faith I believe in one God, the Father almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. consubstantial with the father through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the holy spirit was incarnate of the virgin mary and became man for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and at the right hand of the father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead kingdom will have no end i believe in the holy spirit the lord the giver of life who proceeds from the father and the son who with the father and the son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets i believe in one holy catholic and apostolic church i confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and i look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come amen let us pray god our father We gathered here before you. We have heard your word, and we now present to you our prayers and petitions. For all the people of God, may God's grace strengthen our commu- commitment to giving witness to the gospel in our daily lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elected officials, may the Holy Spirit grant them wisdom and prudence in their service to those who they govern. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families broken by divorce or separation, may the Lord bring them forgiveness and healing. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of this, this faith community, may the presence of Christ in the Eucharist continue to nourish us in faith, hope, and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Alice Flaherty, Felix, Eleanor, and Jerry McCarthy, Brian Gamble, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold silently in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we beg you for an increase in religious vocations. Help our people offer their lives in service to you. Let them hear your Spirit's invitation and awaken in their hearts a desire to respond with courage, generosity, and joy. Raise up from our families faithful leaders who will serve as deacons, priests, and consecrated religious as we entrust to your care all who seek to do your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn of preparation will be hymn number 722, The Reign of God, hymn number 722.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, the sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. It is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Savior of the world, for by your cross. 
cross and resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis our Pope and Walker our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O oh God, <coughs> Almighty Father, <coughs> in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, not into temptation deliver us from evil deliver us Lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. will be hymn number 940, Take and Eat, number 940.
Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. 
The closing song will be number 600, Sing a New Song, number 600.